Hi, this is Vivek and in this particular video, we'll talk about Lagrange interpolation. Now, this is one of those techniques that I've used most probably in the hackiest way possible. I mean, there were problems that never were supposed to be solved using Lagrange interpolation, but it turned out whatever the polynomial was getting created had a limited degree. So, you can actually use a technique like Lagrange interpolation to get the polynomial itself. Now, what are all these things? We'll come to that. The main idea that Lagrange interpolation uses is, hey, you have a function fx equal to, let's suppose, ax square plus bx plus c, standard quadratic, right? But you don't know what the function is actually about. I mean, you don't know the constants a, b, c. But you are given certain values like, hey, f of 0 is 1, f of 1 is 3, f of minus 1 is 3, 1. Can you find out the polynomial? It turns out it's very simple to do for you, right? Because, hey, if you put 0 in this ex expression, you will get this equal to c. If you put 1 in this expression, you will get equal to a plus b plus c. And if you put minus 1 into this, you will get a minus b plus c. And then from here, you can kind of deduce that, hey, uh, c is equal to 1. If you put it over here, a plus b is equal to 2 and a minus b equal to 0. So a and b are also equal to 1, right? From there, you can solve, put them back over here and you will get the polynomial x square plus x plus 1, right? So if you have three values for, with you, you can actually find the three constants that are there in this polynomial, right? By solving the equation, simultaneous equation, whatever gets formed. Now that's the general idea that Lagrange interpolation uses that you can uniquely identify a polynomial of two degree with three values, three x comma y values, right? Which is their input and outputs, right? So basically you had three x zeros, x1, x2, y0, y1, y2 and there were a bunch of terms that you could have used over here like hey my function is actually nothing but y0 which is the value of the first one multiplied by x minus x1 into x minus x2 by x0 minus x1 x0 minus x2 okay what is this exactly written over here so if you see this is nothing but the main Lagrange interpolations idea we'll talk about this in in details but basically what it says is you can say fx is equal to this particular thing y because x minus x1, x minus x2, if you try to put 0 in this or x0 in this, you will see that x0, x0, this is also, this gets cancelled, this gets cancelled, you get y0, right? The other terms that are there in Lagrange, what will happen is if you put x0, one of the terms will become 0 and then this will get to 0, so the whole term becomes 0, right? And there are more terms for y2 also, there will be another term, but that will also get to 0. So that's the main idea of Lagrange that any polynomial which is of n degree, right? And you have y0, y1, y2 up till yn, which is n plus 1 points, right? On that polynomial. You can actually get the equation of that polynomial by formulating it this way. That, hey, go from, go with every point, you have the value multiplied by x minus x0, x minus x1, which are the x values. This is actually the x over here itself, right? And for the ith point, you substitute it over here and put it in the denominator. Exact same thing. With one small caveat, there will be somewhere a point where you will get x minus xi and in the denominator, you will get xi minus xi. Okay? Don't write these two terms. Because if you write in the denominator, there will be a zero, right? If you don't write, then it is always correct. I mean, in this case, see, when we, when we wrote y0, you wrote 1 and 2. You did not write x minus x1, x0. Okay? Because x0 minus x0 will be in there in the denominator. That's the main idea. Simply, if you just write fx, if you have these values, you can write fx using this polynomial that has that is written over here. That is main Lagrange's formula, okay? That representation of a polynomial of n degree using n plus 1 points. But we don't need so much of formulas and stuff, right? We need to see how we can use this in solving problems. So let's see one of those, right? Let's see the main problem that kind of uses Lagrange's interpolation to kind of solve the main idea. Though, the question that we have is, you have to find 1 to the power k plus 2 to the power k plus 3 to the power k up till plus n to the power k for different constraints. Number 1, n is up to 10 to the power 6, k is up to 10 to the power 12. Number 2, n is up to 10 to the power 12, k is up to 10 to the power 6. How do you find this out? Now, the first thing that you can observe in this case is, for the first case, uh, n is small, right? So, there are exactly 10 to the power 6 terms. Evaluate them, just loop over the values, 1 to the power k, you can use binary, uh, binary exponentiation to find out these values in log of uh, the mod or whatever whatever mod is given or log of k actually in this case. Uh, so 
you can find out the answer in n log k because for every term you can just do i to the power k using binary exponentiation in log k do that for n terms and add it up right so this is very very simple to solve if the denominator is like or the, or the number of terms is slow but what if the number of terms is up to 10 to the power 6 and the power is small this is where we start to use lagrange interpolation so very simple idea for lagrange interpolation is the power has to be small or in general the powers are towards the order of like 1000 or so right like when powers are small up to 100 1000 you generally use it for this specific case you can also solve it for 10 to the power 6 right how do you use it in that case so first thing that you have to understand is you have to write a function that you are trying to evaluate so we say f of x is equal to 1 to the power k plus 2 to the power k plus 3 to the power k up till k to the x to the power k that the x is the last term and this is the constraint we need to find f of n right because if you put n over here that's what was asked in the question so my first question to you over here is what is the degree of this polynomial pause the video right over here and think about it what is the degree of this polynomial that is written over here and i'm sure some of you might make a mistake on this one okay i expect you have thought about it the degree of this polynomial is k not exactly it's actually k plus one okay why exactly is that so you have x x minus one i'm trying to write this in the or opposite order x minus two and so on up till one okay to the power k to the power k to the power k right and there are like up till one so if you see this okay that is x to the power k if you try to open this in a binomial way it will be x to the power k plus something something x to the power k minus one like some uh, k choose one something like that right some minus plus something like this but they are lower they are a lower order term so we can ignore them this will be x to the power k and so on right and there will be bunch of x's x to the power k is over here how many terms exactly are there x number of terms because we are going till x so x to the power k x times is present which is nothing but x to the power k plus 1 so the degree of this particular polynomial is actually k plus 1 that's very important for this particular problem okay a lot of people make mistake in this itself next question the degree of this polynomial is k plus 1 so how many points do we need to evaluate whatever the polynomial is i mean i don't know what the rest of the terms are right now i mean rest of the coefficients are because if you open this binomially this binomially there are a lot of terms and you'll have to then add them up together i don't know what they are okay let's say you have to just find out what is the how many points do you need to evaluate a, a polynomial of this much degree if you have a polynomial of degree x you need only x plus one points so if you have polynomial of degree k plus one you need k plus two points okay so what we need to do is we need to find out f of x for k plus two different values and how can we do that we can simply evaluate f of zero f of one f of k f of k plus one we can calculate these values because it's very simple to do it right f of zero is nothing but zero f of one is one to the power k f of two is one to the power k plus two to the power k okay f of and so on so we can simply calculate f of i as i to the power k plus f of i minus 1 right this is something that we can use and from the previous value in o of log k you can calculate the next value okay in o of log k you can calculate the next value from the previous value so this thing we can calculate till k plus 1 and you will get k plus 2 of the x values are 0 1 2 3 4 up till k plus 1 you got their values as y is whatever y's we have right so now how will this polynomial look when we write, write it with Lagrange interpolation right so this was the main formula if you write it down uh, again I just replace this with 0 1 till k plus 1 because those were the values where we will where we were evaluating it and then I have written that same thing in numerator denominator and then over here I am trying to calculate for ith term right whatever it will be the yi value for when you put i you get yi so I am assuming y is this f of i okay so you get this in fact if you put i uh, y i uh, i over here you will see that i minus 0 i minus 0 will cancel i minus 1 i minus 1 will cancel and so on you will get f of i and rest every other term will get 0 okay that's the way we work on Lagrange's polynomial and note that it contains every term in the sequence i minus 0 1 2 3 1, except that i minus i term except that x minus i term that's the difference in all the terms okay so this is what we need to evaluate we need to find out this polynomial or we need to evaluate it at f of n we need to find f of n right 
we need to put x is equal to n in all of them but there are so many terms there are exactly n such terms and each term has k different values sorry this is not n this is going to be k there are k such terms and each has k different values so it will become sort of k squares formula if you just put the values put x is equal to n and try to evaluate this this will become k square log n kind of a solution something like that we'll try to optimize this further let's focus on just this much part of the term because the rest is just f of like the final term will be nothing but f of i multiplied by this right so we can easily find that out but we need to evaluate this particular term faster than o of k we don't want to loop through all the things and calculate it out okay so let's try to see how does this looks right g of i is nothing but from 0 till i uh, minus 1 i mean if you do the bracketing it will be minus and then if you open it will be plus right then x minus i will be missing because you are evaluating i so i minus i and those two terms needs to be removed and then you have the rest of the terms over here okay and in the denominator you will have i i minus 1 i so on okay let's try to see just one instance g0 and g1 okay the g0 will not have the first term and the first denominator because 0 minus 0 and x minus 0 those two terms will not be present so what we can do is we can see it is x minus 1 x minus 2 up till x minus k plus 1 and in denominator it is 0 minus 1 0 minus 2 0 minus 3 and so on up to 0 minus this this is the z0 value okay what is g1 in g1 you will have x minus 0 present but x minus 1 will not be present because 1 is there okay so 1 x minus 1 is not present you have x minus 2 x minus 3 up till x minus k plus 1 in the denominator you have i minus 0 i is 1 so it's fine i 1 minus 1 is not present that term is removed over here okay then you have minus 1 minus 2 up till minus k so now what we do is we do a quick observation what changed when you moved from g0 to g1 from this to this what did you change and i can see a lot of terms being same right i mean over here bunch of these terms are pretty much the same right even till the end i suppose right and over here maybe this minus k minus plus 1 got removed and then a new thing was added over here right so the only thing that changed in the numerator was x minus 1 got removed and x got added and then this um, like minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 up till minus k was even present over here this minus k plus 1 removed and then 1 was added in the front so there is only order one change i mean like four numbers getting changed in over here we can see that as an observation right in fact if you extrapolate it to a general value g of i will be you don't have x minus i and i minus i term you in g of i plus 1 you don't have x minus i plus 1 and i plus 1 minus i plus 1 value so if you see in over here what changed this is nothing but i plus 1 there was only i i i minus 1 and so on okay let's try to see this in numerator and denominator separately i think that would be better so over here in the numerator you see that all of these things was same except over here x minus i plus 1 was present that is missing over here over here x plus x minus i is present that is missing over here number one change okay let's focus on denominator over here you have i plus 1 present which was not present over here because it started from i and decreased this is this is nothing but i so i plus 1 has a new term added so this is new added which is missing over here okay then this term is present over here but it is missing over here because the last term is nothing but i minus k over here also last term was i minus k and then i minus k plus 1 extra term was there which is missing over here okay so there are exactly four terms getting changed which we can simply put it this way that from this to this from g of i you remove this term you divide it by this you add this term so you multiply it with this you remove this term from denominator so you multiply that in the numerator you add this in the denominator this i plus 1 so you add it over here and you get a formula from to go from f of i's coefficient to f of i plus 1's coefficient in order like these are just simple fractions order 1 or order log k because you want to do the inverses when they will be in fractional part right when they will be like in modulo domain so you can now compute the coefficients from one term to the next term in o of log k 
that's the main idea and now i'll show you the code and i'll explain because somebody told me hey vivek you don't explain codes in your videos so i'll explain that now okay so this was my code i i i'm just link the thing over here i'll get, add all the links in the description as well so this was my code i wrote it like in 2019 but i think still relevant and it's a very short code i i've seen many people adding a lot of prefix suffix and all those things very simple thing that you can do over here is this piece of code that we derived and that hey you have for x0 you have y0 so what i'm doing is in the polynomial y y0 basically stores the value for 0 right y is nothing but the first k plus 1 values so you init with with k whatever max k you want to calculate it for and you put 0 equal to 0 y of 1 y of you m place back eb is m place back and you repeat from 1 till k plus 1 so both are inclusive so y of 1 is nothing but 0 plus 1 to the power k y of 2 you put the new value which is 1 to the power k plus 2 to the power k into the y and that's how you can get this pr is nothing but the printing statement i just wrote it for debugging and stuff when i when i was coding this so you can get the initial y of k plus 1 i did it till inclusive of k plus 1 so it will get the k plus 1 value also whatever it is okay next we have to do that same interpolation wala thing which is you have to go through and find the value for f of n okay when you are calculating f of n if it is already less than or equal to k plus 1 you have calculated it so just return it from the array right when you are calculating it for something bigger than that you maintain the initial answer so we are doing bunch of summations of terms right so initial answer is zero you will add each term one by one and this current one is nothing but g of zero we are trying to build g of zero in this so what was g of zero if you go back over here g of zero yeah g of zero over here was minus one minus two minus three up till minus k plus one x minus one x minus two three is, and we are trying to calculate f of n so x is nothing but n in this case right so that is what like you can do in the code n minus 1 n minus 2 n minus 3 up till n minus k plus 1 okay that's what this code does and denominator wise minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 i've just inverted it to multiply right because we are doing it in modulo domain so you get the g0 value in the current right now so what you do is you multiply this g0 into y0 which is nothing but the f of 0 value and then you add that term plus you now shift g0 to the g1 value so before you move to the next thing you shift it okay you shift to the next thing so what was the formula you multiply it with n minus 1 okay you multiply it with n minus 1 over here you multiply you divide it by x minus i plus 1 so n minus i plus 1 you divide it with that so inverse of that multiplied you multiply it with i minus k plus 1 you divide it by i plus k plus i plus 1 right and then you get the new so after this loop current will have g1 so then you come to 1 and then you again add the g1 y1 and then you go forward last for the last iteration you don't want to move forward because it will go out of bounds so you just wait and then you can go forward and print the answer just correct it off if anything became negative uh, because we are doing minus negative iterators right so before you print or before you return you should make it positive once using this expression and then you get it so this is this can be a short piece of code that you can keep handy as a tool that can give you interpolation of 1 to the power k plus 2 to the power k up till n to the power k right so that will be pretty much it for this particular video i will link a link a blog which will have more problems on interpolation uh, lagrange interpolation and uh, i hope all of these things made sense do like subscribe and share the video with others who might find it helpful because creating these hard contents take a lot of effort like all these slides all these videos do take a lot of effort on my end and uh, it will be like a very small like contribution from your side to support creating harder content because if nobody supports creating these harder contents uh, you not see harder contents being created on youtube right so that's all from my side uh, and do the, do it only when you have when you have found out that this is valuable if you found it not so much or maybe you find it's not worthwhile maybe you can skip so that's all from my side for today see you in the next one bye bye